Hi, I'm Jim Anderson, technical editor of SSGM Magazine, and I'm here in Scarborough, Ontario at Redline Automotive. I'm not going to be working on this Honda Civic today. Instead, who will be working on it is Jim Wolf. Hi, how you doing? Jim, how you doing? Jim, you've been a licensed motor vehicle technician for how long? I've been licensed since 1979. 79, so yeah. you've got considerable experience. So Just a bit. This is not the first time you've seen a Civic like this, uh, this old 91 4th Gen. No, but not seeing many of them anymore. Okay. <laughs> what will we be doing today? Uh, today we're going to be doing uh, front and rear brakes, uh, caliper replacement, uh, 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 rotors and drums. Great, let's get going. Okay, the front brakes here, we have a fairly fair amount of roughness on the rotor surface. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's from heat or dirt getting in between the pad and the rotor. Mm -hmm. Pads themselves are probably just a little over half worn, mm -hmm. but the piston in the caliper is very stiff uh, going back, as well as the sliders. Mm -hmm. So the calipers definitely need replacement, and uh, you're not going to get a good braking issue without replacing the pads and rotors. Yeah. Jim, this Honda design uses rubber boot bellows to protect the slider pins in here. I've seen these things crack and deteriorate, and a lot of moisture get in there. Is that Oh, the yeah, that's, that's a very common problem. Uh -huh. These ones appear to be intact, but they're still very stiff. Another common problem is people that have done the brakes before have used the wrong lubricants and caused mm -hmm. them to seize up, caused the rubber to swell. Mm -hmm. Are you still seeing anti-seize compounds and petroleum greases used in these? I saw one yesterday. I can't even remember what kind of car it was, but it Terrific. was filled. Terrific. They were seized solid. <laughs> Let's go to the back and see what we have back at the rear. Drum brakes on this older Civic? Yep, drum brakes. The shoes are actually in pretty good shape unless they look like they've been changed not too long ago. Mm -hmm. The wheel cylinders are dry, they have free movement, but I don't know whose shoes these are, and it's always important to have matching friction materials from the front to the rear of the car to get even braking. So mm -hmm. we're going to be replacing these today to match the fronts. That's interesting. It looks like this is not a leading shoe, trailing shoe system. Those shoes look like they're exactly the same front to back. Yeah, that's a self-centering brake system. Okay, I guess that means that uh, you have to be a little bit less careful orienting the shoes and pull them out of the box, or do you still think in those Well, cases? you still look at them, because sometimes the, uh, the replacement shoes do have different ones. Uh, you know, the original ones may have the, an equal front and rear, but sometimes the aftermarket changes things, so you've got to be careful. Great, let's take it apart. All right, Jim has the calipers apart, and we talked a little bit about the, the pads. Jim, tell me what you see with this caliper. Well, this inside pad is wearing on an angle due to the fact that these sliders on the caliper have been sticking, therefore causing the pad to wedge this direction. And as we were talking about, we have anti-seize compound, which is a petroleum-based product, which tends to swell the rubbers and make them jam. For the record, what is the correct lubricant for brake parts? A uh, silicone-based uh, grease, okay. Silglide or other, lots of brand names, but a silicone based. Okay, these are specific lubricants designed for brake use? Yes. Okay. Jim, I see you've got the new brake rotor ready to go. It's got a lovely Blanchard ground finish on there. Are you just going to bang this thing on, or what are you going to do to this rotor before you install it? Well, I just took some brake clean to it, which removes any of the uh, rust preventative that's on the rotor for shipping to keep it in good shape so we don't have a pile of rust on it when we put it on. Okay, fair enough. Jim has just pulled the rotor on the other side, the passenger side of the car, and we've noticed a problem here. Jim, what do we have? Well, we've got a lot of rust build up on here, and there's a, a lot of pitting, which if you tried to machine this rotor, even if it was thick enough to machine, mm -hmm. it's like rust on the body of a car. When you start cleaning it, it blossoms from underneath. The rust is actually coming from the inside out. Mm. Jim, I've noticed that uh, on the vented rotors, particularly on some of the import cars now, there's not a lot of meat on these rotors to machine them in the first place. No, there's very little, and yeah. it's, it's almost impractical on most cars to machine them. The cost of machining, it, uh, if, if you do machine them, the rotor becomes thinner, the brakes don't dissipate the heat as well, they wear quicker, so in most cases it's more cost effective just to put a new rotor on. Okay. Jim, I see the hub mating face here, you've wiped this clean, you've added a thin, even coat of anti-seize over the entire face of it. Yeah, I just find that it, it helps rust uh, start forming in between and helps the rotor seat into the hub a little bit and keep it true and flat over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. It works for me. Jim, question about wheel balance. I know that I've, I've heard stories of customers coming in, a poor brake job like this, uh, bolt the rotor, bolt the tire up, suddenly there's a vibration that wasn't there before. It does happen once in a while. Sometimes it's uh, if the hub's not cleaned or maybe it, you know, uh, the rotor was wobbling before and now it's running true. It changes the balance dynamics of the car. Uh, the wheel could have been indexed in a different position, mm -hmm. possibly balanced on the car, although that doesn't happen much anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and the odd, odd time, especially with a, a cheap brand of rotor, you'll find they're out of balance and that'll cause a vibration. Mm -hmm. Jim, I see you've got this caliper apart. I've noticed that it looks, appears to be pre-lubed. Yeah, that's nice. They put the silicone grease in here rather than the anti-seize like was in the old ones. Yep. That's the correct stuff and uh, not too much. If you get too much in there, it actually works like a hydraulic lock on it keeps the caliper from traveling properly. Hmm. Would you add lube to this at this point? No. Looks perfect to me. Okay. 
Jim is behind me loading the caliper on the passenger side of this Civic. He's installing AC Delco Advantage Ceramic Pads. These are chamfered and slotted. They fit exactly in the OE style caliper and they come with the shims integrally crimped on the back. Jim, I see you're, you've got a, uh, looks like a scotch brite pad on the end of uh, this guy grinder. What are you doing here? Where the, pa the uh, pad, the shoe contacts the backing plate here, there's mm -hmm. some rust buildup. Mm -hmm. And I want the shoe to be able to slide nicely on there, especially as I was saying earlier about this being a self-centering brake system, it's very important that the shoes can slide freely. Okay. So we just want a good smooth surface. Okay, notice it's like a, it's a, um, a surfacing pad here. This is not a wire brush. You prefer this type? Uh, depends on the condition of the material you're working with. And this one, there's a fair bit of rust here, so yeah, I like this a little bit better. Okay. If it was just loose, then a wire brush should be fine. Okay, when you're done here, will you be lubricating these contact points or yeah. running them dry? No, we'll be lubricating them. Okay. That, we'll again, that helps avoid noises, keeps the shoe sliding freely. Okay, what kind of lube would you use for this purpose? For this, you can use almost anything. I generally use uh, an anti-seize compound, but okay. uh, I've seen people use Lubriplate, which works just fine, and the silicone-based greases work well as well. Okay, let's do it. Oh, I got my greasy fingers on that brake friction there. That's going to be a bad deal. Uh, Jim, it's almost impossible in my experience to install brake shoes without getting something on the surface level friction material. What are you going to do about yeah, that? That's pretty tough, but I'll just take a little brake clean here and that'll clean it off okay. and then we'll be fine. Now, Jim, I've noticed by using brake cleaner, this stuff has a really low flash point. This stuff evaporates off almost immediately as soon as you put it on. Yeah. Okay. I'd assume then don't go in there with Varsol or... No, Varsol's not good. It's, uh, again, a petroleum-based product, which will just rot in there and ruin everything. Fair enough. Jim now has his brake assembly at the rear complete. This is AC Delco Durastop shoes. Also, AC Delco Durastop hardware. This is all new hardware, Jim. Why new hardware? Well, the new hardware, it keeps, uh, the, first of all, the shoe planted firmly against the backing plate, mm -hmm. uh, returns the shoes on the cylinder, also helps the self-adjuster operate properly. Mm -hmm. It's... Uh, even if the old hardware looks good, before these brake shoes are going to be worn out, if you were to reuse the old stuff, I'm mm -hmm. sure the springs would have lost their tension long before the life of the shoe, and you'd be replacing the shoes early again. Mm -hmm. Jim, uh, this is a high salt environment in Southern Ontario, and you see a little bit of rust in here. Uh, adjusters. I know these things are supposed to self-adjust. Is that how often do you see these things seize, damage, or inoperable? Uh, it's probably... 20-30% of the time. Uh, most of the time, it's as long as it's properly lubricated and if the car is driven often enough, they mm -hmm. keep working pretty good. Hmm. This job is essentially complete. All that's left now is to put the car off the hoist, torque up and go. This, you'd think, would be the only tool to do that, but in fact, this is the tool to initially seat it. The real tool is in Jim's hands. Jim? Yeah, I've got the torque wrench here. And there's really three reasons why we torque the wheels. One, we know the wheel's tight enough that it's not going to fall off. Two, it's not too tight and the customer can get it off if he has a flat tire. But the biggest reason is we don't distort the drums and rotors by uneven pressure. Jim Wolf has completed the install on this 91 Civic. He's installed AC Delco rotors, AC Delco brake drums, AC Delco Durastop brake shoes and Durastop calipers, as well as AC Delco Advantage ceramic front brake friction. Let's see how it went. Well, Jim, how did it go? Just fine. No problems Jim, at all. Good job. Jim, you see a lot of work done by other technicians, other mechanics um, in this shop. What's the most common mistake you see involving brake work? Incorrect lubrication, either the wrong type of lubricant or not enough lubricant, and reusing hardware that's not up to the job. Okay, now you're an experienced man. Uh, well, if there's one piece of advice you could give to a young apprentice entering the trade, working on brakes the first time, what would that be? Just take your time and be careful. Fantastic. Jim, thanks. You're welcome.